All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for another episode, or maybe your first episode of the Variety Half Hour. Today, I'm sitting with Bobby, the Bobby, photographer, videographer, perhaps model, but Bobby Kearns Productions is a small business owner, and he's super talented. Bobby, how are you? I'm I'm good. I have never been introduced as the Bobby. The, the 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 Bobby. That's 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 quite a lot of weight for all the Bobbies out there. But I but I'll take it. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in Austin, Texas now, and I'm getting used to 100 degree weather. I. That's a lot. That's that's <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> like I, I I like it hot. I don't like the cold. Um, but a hundred degree wet, that's a lot. Like what sparked that choice? <laughs> you see, when I was young and dumb eight months ago. <laughs> eight months ago. You know what? A lot can happen in eight months. It, that's it'd exactly. be like that. It'd be like that. The long and oh, the yeah. short of it is uh my company has a Austin office. I moved here ah. for you know low growth. And there's a huge comedy gotcha. scene. There you go. So it, it kind of worked out, but also yes. the heat. So, so there's hot. that. It's crazy. Yeah, I can imagine. But, That's yeah. not too bad. but opportunity. Opportunity. Uh, hey. For those of you, <laughs> for those of you who are audio listeners, I got to tell you, Bobby, not only does he have green skin, his background is a little too professional for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So I, I'm I'm at my studio right now. Obviously, I do the, the whole, you know, photo video production stuff. And so this is the setup that I use when I take calls and stuff like that. And so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do this because why not? And this is actually the first podcast that I've ever been a guest on. So thanks. Like, this is this is pretty great. And I'm like, oh, I will just use the setup that I that I always use. So yeah. Oh my god. I feel very special uh to describe yes. it. It's like a leather black couch. And then the background it's like black but with blue stripes. And then there's a little fern in the corner. So it's like we're yeah. between two ferns. <laughs> we used to have we used to have another plant over there, but it's currently being used elsewhere. So yeah. Plants, am I right? So, Bobby, if you were to introduce yourself, like, tell us, what what do you do? What do you be one? What do you want to be known for? Oh, what do I want to be known for? That's a big one. Um, So I guess, first off, what do I do? Um, I run a production company uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, born and raised. And so um, I've been doing photo and video for about eight or nine years. I can't remember. It keeps changing. You know, time, it does that. But um, I've been doing photo and video for almost a decade. And um, I produce a lot of stuff for a lot of people, basically. I do all of the um, normal portrait photography stuff, so family portraits and all that. But then I work with small businesses and some of Charlotte's largest organizations. So I am the videographer for stuff like Charlotte Pride. Um, I do stuff for, I've done stuff for Red Bull in the past. I've done stuff for, I don't know, a lot of stuff. So like, I'd be, I'd be all over. I've done a lot of stuff in the Charlotte comedy scene. Um, I used to be primarily, and this was pre-COVID, I used to do um, regular uh, photos for like a couple of different show productions uh, that were specifically comedy. And then COVID said just nope to everybody at all at once. So, you know, now I don't do as much specifically in the comedy scene, but I still work with a lot of comedians and stuff like that and do some stuff here and there, so. Yeah, that's, I guess, how I would be known as the photo video guy for a lot of people in Charlotte. All right. I mean, I've never heard of you as just the video guy, but that is you know, how we met. <laughs> it's so funny because, I mean, I, I do a lot of other stuff, too, that doesn't really get, like, the focus. Like, I mean, I act, I sing, I've written stuff, I, I produce a late night show um, uh, called Sterling. Never Right. I Yes, mm-hmm. Sterling Thrill. I, 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 yeah, we do Night Bright together. We're bringing that back for season three later this year. Um, I've done documentary stuff. So like, I do a lot, but like, that's the main, 
that's the easy way. Just like, yeah, the photo video guy. And there's some people that don't recognize me without the camera. And I'm like, how can you not? How can you forget this hair? I have an afro. Like, what are we doing here? But, you know, sometimes it's just that's the target that gets people focused. So, yeah, photo video guy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we met. Um, I believe you were taking photos for a comedy show I was on, hosted by Shane Lane. And then I bought yeah. some of those photos. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was a while ago. Man, that Forever was Forever like, ago. Wow. It's been like three years. That was post-COVID, but that was, was it post-COVID? Was it pre-COVID? Yeah, I didn't do comedy yeah. before COVID, so it was, oh, so it was, it was during COVID. Wow. It was during COVID, oh, sorry. That yeah. sounds about right. And, you know, the yeah. struggle. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting there's a post there's I think of post COVID <laughs> as like after March 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. It's just, yeah. No, it's just like not in it's just like it was before COVID and after COVID, not during COVID. It was just it was. But yeah. Exactly. No, it's, it's it's rough. I mean, for a lot of people, especially like small businesses though, like for me, there was no like I mean, there was a during COVID, but for the most part, it was like, I mean, we still got to figure out what to do. So, like, it was rough. It was it was just rough all around. Um, Yeah, it, it was rough. But, you know, we made it. We all made it. A million people didn't make it. But, yeah. I mean, that ain't, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us. We, we, as in the collective we, if you listen to this, you made it. If, you, if you're not listening to this, you didn't make it. But you also don't know. Yeah, no, there's a lot of people who didn't yes. make it. I, I will say that. Yeah, yeah, but no, we, the successful ones, the uh, the alive ones, we made it. I totally, I know what you're saying. I just like to, uh, you know. Address the fact that, yes, people did die. Yes, the, yes, the they did. And did. I feel die. so bad for them. I feel, I feel bad for them, you know. Everyone did not make it out of COVID. However, my business was one of the successful ones that did make it out of COVID. And I am, I am happy about that because, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it was rough, and I put in the work, and I know a lot of other people did too. But like, I'm not them. But I made it, and I'm so happy I did. All right, we'll forget about those other people. Let's <laughs> pretend. I, I mean, we won't forget. Never forget. But you know, yeah, it's, it's so. Tough. Let's move into topics, uh, Bobby. I have a list of topics one through ten. I would like you to yep. pick number. One through ten. Oh, okay. Let's go five. Split it right down the middle. Five. Okay. So today, uh, not today. Our first question: Do you care mm. about each month having like a DEI attached to it, like how there's Black History Month and there's Asian American Month and then there's High mm. Disability Month and uh, there's like Hispanic Heritage month-ish there are a lot of months like wow September and October. yeah so i'm not even gonna lie i don't really pay attention to a lot of that like i mean like i know every month has something but i'm not even gonna lie like i couldn't tell you what september is i couldn't tell you what october like i just don't know and a lot of times it's mm-hmm. because they're not as publicized i'd probably say um but like i mean I, you know i care about black history you know <laughs> i'm like there's certain months that it's like I, I feel like i feel like that's everyone though people care more about the months that are like specific to them unless it's like a big thing if you don't care about the month like white people kind of have to acknowledge black history month because it's been made a thing to where it's like you don't care about black history month you don't care about black people so it's like well, yeah, they're going to have to acknowledge the Black History Month. Uh, and then, like, same for, for Pride Month. So I think there's some Pride, or there's some months that, like, have gotten more of the focus. Um, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily that I care about them having a designation and stuff like that. But I think it is important. Like, when I when I realized that, like, oh, something's happening, it's like, oh, that's really cool. But also, like, I feel like people also, like, use everything for monetary gain. So it's like... Black History Month. We having an MLK car dealership sale. MLK had to walk. What you doing selling cars in Martin's name? Martin Martin was not driving for freedom. Martin was walking for freedom. So it's stuff like that to where it's like, why are we addressing it and how are we addressing it is, I think, important too. But like, no, I definitely, it's probably something everybody should pay more attention to. It's just like, what months are what? And spotlighting stuff because it's that month for a reason. So that cause or those people may need more awareness for some of the stuff they're going through or different things like that. So 
I think I think it's important. I just need a calendar, like a physical calendar that says what's happening. <laughs> yeah. It's easy for me to keep track of these things because I work for a company that keeps track of these things. <laughs> so uh, the, yeah, no, yeah. I work for a company called me. So yeah. we don't we don't <laughs> we don't pay attention to that. We we pay attention to uh, when photo shoots are and video shoots. But yeah, no, I mean that'd be a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, even as someone who is like I I know most of these months, I I understand the value in it. I guess for me, yeah. I see that this is a projector to information. Like, uh, mm. for instance, Black History Month. It started yeah. as Black History Week. <laughs> you know, fair. it used to yeah, just be it, people fought for a week. And then yeah. we fought for a month. And the eventual... And home. the shortest month at that. But you know what? We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. You know what? You're going to give us a month. At least it's a month. We'll take it. Yes, and all of this is with the hope, I assume, that all of the history will be incorporated to yearly mm -hmm. knowledge. The progress that we want will be taken before we get there. And that's why I was kind of saying with Black History Month, we want to turn it into like a regular thing of history. But then you have like politicians using this as like voting platforms, like how... Awesome. Um, yeah, they ban the books and they're like mm -hmm. trying to change college courses like CRT. And so it's just like, I feel I understand why there's these months. Do I particularly care? I fear not. Um, <laughs> I get you. I, like, I get you. Instead of them being national months, I prefer that you just start integrating it into society into education that's like literally the first step correct because it's like if you're gonna spend just february talking about black history but then you're gonna do like in florida you're gonna say that it's mandatory to say that slavery was like a benefit to black people and so like it's like okay well doesn't really seem like black history is really doing too much we're just gonna say that we like being in the fields so like what are we doing here like it's not really we're not helping ourselves and it's like what are we doing here um yeah it's either we're for it or we're not and so i get what you're saying i i definitely feel like the the months should be like you said a jumping off point to kind of educating and making stuff more aware um and yeah i would just hope that it I, I would just hope people care more in general. Don't just care because the calendar told you to care. Just care, period. Yeah, <laughs> and that that should be it. Yeah. Okay, but I I said all that even though I mean truthfully I did learn a lot from AAPI month. I was like, oh, that's all Asia. Oh, yeah. like I didn't know Europe yeah. <laughs> was a fake continent. <laughs> like it's <Right>. all Asia. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I see like, yeah, like the whole like mass of like yeah. yeah I see what you're saying. They think That's white funny. enough. No, I, they, uh, I mean, the whites have been claiming stuff that ain't theirs for forever. I mean. That's just, I'm sorry if you white watching this, but you know, that's a part of your culture. That's a part of like every, like, it's just, hey, we ain't got to go into it because we already know. But like, they watch Pocahontas. Like, they'll say it. Like, th there it is. Like, y'all been laying stake to stuff that ain't y'all's for forever. So, like, it makes sense that we don't understand where borders are and what is actually white people. I mean, look at the, wasn't that the Ten Commandments that was played by all white people? What? It was, like, a lot of the, I don't know, like, a lot of the, like, movies that are supposed to show, like, Egyptian people and all of that oh, stuff. It's like, yes. there's a white man. Okay, yeah. Moses was, like, Moses was a Caucasian white man yeah okay okay and in 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 egypt got it where is egypt okay no sip got it so yeah Just no like, it doesn't surprise um, me that like people don't know where stuff is have you seen the avatar the tv show versus oh, the movie like the, the tv show versus the movie like the avatar the last airbender yes i have seen like part of season one it's on my list i gotta watch more it's okay basically they're like all asian from like dark skin to light skin asian 
and then in the movie, oh, got you, yeah. Bright Lights. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, I've heard about the movie. Yeah, people, people be hating on that Avatar, the last Airbender movie, and I have not even bothered to watch it because I want to watch the correct thing before I put myself through the suffering just to see. I just want to see. I already know it's bad, but I just want to see. Like I need to experience it, but not yet. Not yet. Okay. So I mean, I really want to ask you about your opinion of Elijah, <laughs> but we have to go into the next topic. Of what? M, what's his name? M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, M. Night Shyamalan. I haven't seen a yeah. lot of his movies, so I can't even actually give a good opinion. But I've heard he dropped the ball, and that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> and he likes a lot of twists, and the twists have been getting worse apparently. So that's all. That's all I've heard. He's been twisting right out of everybody's favor. So I honestly, I I also haven't had enough to judge it, but the movies that I have seen, yeah, kooky. Cookie. <laughs> That's a good word for her. <laughs> I like that. I like that. But yeah, no, I've heard a mix of I've heard a mix of stuff about him, but you know. I feel like everybody does that. Falls in and out of favor. Yeah. So next topic, number one through next topic. ten. That's not five. Um ooh. one. One. What? One. Oh, when you listen to a song, are you the singer or are you the person they're singing about? Oh, oh, that's a great question. Um, I forgot. Nah, I I'm that. the singer. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the one they sing. I, I'm the singer. I'm telling whatever. I'm feeling whatever they felt. If if Taylor Swift singing, she's singing about what I'm. We feeling the same thing. Same thing with anybody. Everybody feeling. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm singing that at somebody. So that's that's a good idea, though. That's that's a good question. That lets people know: Are you the main character in your head, or are you the like? Are you writing the story? Are you the yeah? That's yeah. No, I'm 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 writing it. I'm singing it as if I wrote it. Okay. Do you like for every song period? For the most part, yeah. I mean, I don't feel like they're singing at me because I don't know them. So it's like unless unless. I feel like targeted, like you know, certain songs. It's like you going through something, and then they'll be like, "Driving down the highway just broke their heart," and I'm like, "You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta come at me like that. Why we, why are you coming from like so?" So I love yeah. like that maybe, but like nah. Other than that, no, I'm, I'm singing about myself. Like you know. okay, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit of a mixed bag. I am typically not even the singer. But more of like the backup support, you know. So if it's a <laughs> background singer, <laughs> yeah, of the chorus vocals. I was in the so, booth beside him when they was recording that song. <laughs> like for instance, if I was listening to a Drake song, yeah, uh, unless <laughs> like I'm probably in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the couch. I'm listening to him in the booth. You know, I'm like, yeah, that, that's pretty good. Okay, I see where you, I see what you're coming from. I get that. Yeah. So I guess in mostly, I feel like I'm the person they're talking to, like in the way of I'm there with you. I'm not you, but mm. okay, I, hear I you. can kind of see that. I kind of see that. Okay, I guess for some songs I'm kind of like that, but I never feel like they like singing at me and i'm like oh you just gotta take it like yeah <laughs> like man right? leave me alone so yeah no i'm i'm either i'm feeling it exactly with them or i'm like i'm there with you like i got you i got what you putting down so i, I get what you're saying yeah i'm more like that, yeah I'd say. yeah yeah it's like as i say it i i can't even think of a song and it's like this was my question oh <laughs> No, you're good. No, you're good. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's any time, though. Anytime you're, like, trying to figure out, like, oh, I know music. Okay, name an artist that you like. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, it's like, you don't listen to music? It's like, I do, but I'm on the spot. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know what? That is how I feel. I feel like they're talking to me, regardless of if it's, like, actual, like, regardless of what kind of song it is. Because I'm thinking yeah. about a Flowbox song. 
where it feels like they're, you know, they're projecting their anger and they want me to understand. And it's like, I get you. And so that's why I feel like more of a companionship than like the okay. singer. I get that. I just feel like I gotta like be in the same feel as what they was feeling sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess. Like, yeah, I, mean, I don't still listen got to a lot of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's most of like what it is. And so I think that's where that connection kind of comes from. But yeah, I guess I could see it more as like a storytelling, like you're talking to me. You're not necessarily mm-hmm. talking about me. You're just talking to me, like you're telling me something. But I guess it's- yeah. So that's yeah. that's that's interesting too, because it's like yeah, if you're telling the story, I wouldn't dare. Like so, it couldn't possibly be like I'm viewing it from that perspective. So I guess it just kind of depends on the song. Yeah. yeah. What a time. Anyway. <laughs> let us move forward uh that that topic did not take long at all it's all good you, it's all good some do some don't right are you ready for some news i i think so so knowing that you are a writer and producer and filmographer and some other words that are hard for me to pronounce. I have some news based some on the writer strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Bet. So, I mean, I guess to start, do you are you pretty knowledgeable about the strike? Like, how do you feel about the writers striking in particular? Uh, the writers part, or the writers and the actors, or the like? I know everybody, not everybody on strike, but like. There's a lot of people on strike, but yeah, no, I've I've been pretty knowledgeable about um from the from the writers aspect, and um Mm -hmm. it's just pretty interesting. And now, like that, the actors are also, and I'm like, okay, this is even more interesting because I mean, this hasn't happened in like sixty something years, but for them both to be on strike. But I mean, even with the writers, I think that they were kind of losing. I mean. I totally understand why they're on strike and like, yeah, no, y'all should have been on strike. Like they really trying to do y'all dirty, but I feel like it was going to be really hard for them to actually get some of the stuff that they wanted until the actors also went on strike. And now, I mean, who knows? The actors could still like, you know, figure out some sort of thing that works for them without the writers. But I feel like now it's more of like a, now we're back in this together and you know, it, it all matters. So and I mean, yeah, but I hope. But I mean, everybody's kind of got similar fears. It's like residuals and AI. <laughs> like, like that's really what it's boiling down to. Uh, and there's obviously, you know, smaller stuff. But I mean, those are the two biggest things. So hopefully, hopefully it's able to work out for people. But I mean, these studios aren't really uh, in the business of wanting to give out the most money to people um, <laughs> historically. You know? So. Hopefully this um, works out in their favor. Yes, you've pointed us right in the direction of our first article today. I'm glad. I'm glad. Netflix has been criticized for posting AI jobs paying up to $900,000 while writers and actors are on strike. AI jobs? Like, jobs for robots you ain't even got to post the job listing what's happening right now what are you talking about what (laughs) they they (laughs) i'm so confused like is there like a robot version of linkedin that i don't know about like so they're they're paying or okay so they're paying up to so Netflix is posting several AI related positions paying six figure salaries okay. like um, product manager, machine learning, um, machine learning platform. And that's paying 300,000 to 900,000 a year. Oh, so you need to help come train the AI or you need to use AI to be able to help get this job done. Okay. So I've got an interesting take on a lot of the AI stuff and mm-hmm. And then I heard something yesterday that really like solidified my position. So Mm -hmm. I think everyone should both actively be afraid of AI and embrace AI because here's the thing, whether you like it or not, it's coming. Actually, whether you like it or not, it's here. Like surprise, it's it's already here. So yes, you should be afraid because things are going to change. 
But isn't that life? Like everything changes. And yes, I understand like people's jobs have changed and or people's jobs are the same and they would like them to not change and they would like job security. And I totally understand that. And I definitely understand having people like be able to make a living. Like people should be able to make a living with the tools and, you know, stuff that they, you know, went to school for and be able to apply their skills in certain ways. However, I was watching an interview with Kiki Palmer. I love Kiki Palmer. I was watching her. She interviewed Will I Am. And Will I Am said, if you took um like some like if you took Jordan Peele and you took him back in time to meet like Picasso. And you were like, hey, this guy's a film director. He'd be like, what's a film director? And he'd be like, oh, well, he does what you do. He makes paintings, but he makes like 60 of them per second. And he just stitches them all together and makes a movie. And Picasso would be like, it takes me like a week to do one of these. Or it takes me two weeks or three weeks to do one of these. What's happening? Mm -hmm. It's the same exact thing. It's just it's evolved and it's changed. But we still value paintings and art. We still value photography and all that stuff. And we just do it in a totally different way. And I've been saying for a while now, even on my podcast, we've had a whole thing about like talking about AI. I think that AI is just going to change the level of quality. And it's going to raise the bar for what is mediocre. Because right now, mm -hmm. like anybody can start a podcast. But go back 20 years, people be like, What's a podcast? That's a talk show. Like, and that's expensive. Like, I can't afford a microphone. I can't do this and this. And now anybody, I mean, everybody, to the point that people hate podcasts now. They'd be like, why everybody got a microphone? Everybody's trying to talk and stuff like that. And look at us on a podcast. But I mean, that's the thing is like everything changes, everything evolves, and just the level of mediocre mediocrity changes. And so it's I think it's just going to cause everyone to have to do better in a way and change what you do like in my like okay cool for me like there's websites right now you upload 15 photos of you and it'll spit you without a headshot i charge 250 for a headshot or for seven headshots i mean once people know that they're gonna be like okay i can choose an ai photo or I can pay you a bunch of money to come to the studio and do something that might look pretty similar or whatever. This thing can give me different clothes. I can get unlimited outfits. Okay, so cool. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop being a photographer and I'm going to you know, freak out and stuff like that. It just means, oh, I'm going to shift to more creative direction or I'm going to shift to more unique ideas or I'm going to shift to more live production stuff or stuff that doesn't have to be um, stuff that has to be captured in the moment, like recap events. Until we get robots walking around and actually using the camera at events, I think I'm pretty safe on that. Weddings and other stuff like that. So when it comes to something like this Netflix thing, it's like, well, yes, that is scary. But also, like, well, would you expect Netflix to also still film their movies on, like, old, old school cameras from, like, the 80s and 90s? Like, no, everything has evolved. And so we just all have to, as a society, be like, oh, okay, well, this is now different. Just like when we went from like old school cameras to the iPhone, this is now different. Like everything has a oh oh crap, we're 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 all moving, we're all doing things, and so I think it's just finding how that affects your job and figuring out what tools you can use to make your stuff better and work for you and your benefit. Because if you know nothing about AI, yeah, you should probably be terrified. If you don't know how to use a computer, you should probably be terrified. I don't know how you're making it if you don't know how to use a computer, but um, you should be. You should probably be terrified because yeah, you, you should probably hop on there, search up with some AI, some mid journey, some different different stuff like that, and just, just you know, look around a little bit and oh figure it gosh. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I how I feel is basically like one, it's not quite time to fear AI in the way of they're not gonna take all our jobs. Computers barely yeah. work as it is. There's no way yeah. AI is going to be as no. great as people think it is. Yeah, I think it's only certain jobs right now. Like I have an editor yeah. for for my business now. Um and like we do like I it's like, like we do the podcast. There are certain programs right now that will just like if you put in the footage, it'll just edit a podcast for you. 
Like it'll just do it. Like you just hit a button and it'll be like, oh, okay, here's who's speaking. It'll switch all the camera angles and then it'll automate like, oh, this will probably be a good real clip. This will be good. This will be good. This will be good. And then you just kind of go through. So like certain jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And there's but other jobs like, it's like, yeah. There's some places that do have that specialized um, AI features that are in danger. And that's like music, podcasts photographers yes. painters like those are where the specialized tools are and it's mm -hmm. an art and so it's like you have to deal with copyright and it's like people are just sampling your material without compensating mm -hmm. you and so that's where yeah. it kind of comes back where i'm like should ai also be part of a like you know like i believe yeah. it was a few artists who were like if you use my stuff, AI needs to like pay me for like public domain because it's not public domain. I oh yeah, somebody. So, yeah, no. Some some big artist was suing because their music was put into a thing to train. I don't remember what artist it was, but yeah, that was like I saw that like last week. Some artist is suing um one of these AI things or whatever because yeah, their music was put in to generate stuff. Um, and I mean it makes sense because. You can't just take anything and say like, oh, yeah, like I can make a new version of this just because like the person didn't approve of it. But then you've got stuff like Adobe, who has like the whole creative cloud. So they've got like Photoshop and Lightroom and all this stuff. They've got their own stock assets. assets. So it's like anything you create in like side of the Photoshop stuff, it's all like if you've got a creative cl cloud subscription and with their stock stuff, you can use whatever it spits out. And so it's like mid journey who is just and like other ones who are just taking from everybody. It's a little more dangerous, but the ones, the people who like have the library of stuff and like content, that is going to be where it gets really interesting because then it's like, oh no, we've got the license to all this stuff. Whatever this thing spits out, yeah, no, it's totally fine. And that's where the scary stuff is going to happen. But yeah, the legal, the legality on some of this, some of this stuff is very interesting too. Um, Cause yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, that is our 30 minutes. It's been such a great that, that time. That was a quick 30 minutes. That's crazy. I know. That's why it's the variety half hour. Get them in. Yeah. Get them out. <laughs> but how would you like to? <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on. Do you have yeah. like uh, anything you'd like to share? How can people find mm. you? The, the late okay. night show? Oh, yeah. OK, well, I got a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to shout it all out. Um, But basically, if you are I mean, if you're anywhere, we travel. But um, if you're in need of photo video services, really anywhere. But we are based in Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you're anywhere in North Carolina, South Carolina, that's like obviously our immediate range. But like I said, we travel and go anywhere. Um, You can reach out. Um, Our website is bobbycurrentsproductions.com. K E R N S, not K E A R N S. There's no way. Um, but uh, Bobby Kearns Productions on social media. So if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, that's where we post most of our stuff, even though I'm bad at posting, but I try. Um, and then uh, the late night show is called Night Bright. And we are, I mean, as far as I know, we're Charlotte's only late night talk show. And especially with the writers on strike and now the actors on strike, if you are interested in seeing some late night stuff, we have season one up from last year and then season, uh, no, season two up from last year. And then season three will be coming out um, within the next couple of months. We're in the pre-planning stages and locking in dates and people and stuff like that. But you can find that at uh, Dream Chaser on Dream Chaser Entertainment. That's our uh, entertainment network. And so that's dreamchaser.tv. So like not dot com, like www dreamchaser. I'll, <laughs> I'll have the links, yeah. you know. I'll like, make it you easy. You know, you gotta tell people, people sometimes. They'd be like dot com dot TV. No, 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 just dot TV. We got to dot TV. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, all right. That. This is really fun. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, had a great time talking to Bobby. You can look at all his links below and uh, see you next week.